Hello and welcome. This time we are going to talk about object-oriented programming again, but now we want to reflect a little bit what we have seen, what we have experienced. One thing we have experienced for sure. When we wrote our, our Blink script, object-oriented, we produced quite a number of, load of, of, of code lines. Much more than necessary, because if we do this with classical programming, we are done in very few lines. And then we selected maybe a little bit complex object-oriented approach, and suddenly this was blown up simply. The same functionality, a lot of lines of code. This is sometimes the case if you want to use object-oriented programming, that simple things might get unnecessary complex in definitions. Okay? So this can happen. Yeah? Or this, especially if it's very simple things you want to achieve, then it's unnecessary complex. Yeah? There's all those definitions and stuff. All the definitions you maybe get a little bit quite into some pickle, yeah? Because, you know, sometimes you just cannot make it right. It's in life, the same as an object-oriented programming. Yeah? Sometimes you just cannot get it right. i show you what I mean. Let's say we have graphic object. Yeah? So there is a class, graphic object. There are some attributes defined. So there is an area of the graphic object. There is an... Yeah? Graphic 2D object. Okay, it's a class. Yeah. Needs to have some borders, there needs to be an area, yeah, and there is also uh, the length of the border and whew, umfang, umfang, uh, border length, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, and then there is a special graphic object, we call it rectangle. Just yeah. have some special meanings. Some special attributes, four, four edges, yeah, it's a rectangle. Yeah. 90 degree, the edges, the corners and so on. Rectangle. Uh, you know what a rectangle is. And there's a special form of rectangle. We call it square. The logical way of doing it, of defining those objects, would be from the more common thing to the specialized thing. Yeah? So there's a graphic object, there's a rectangle, rectangle is a special graphic object, and square is a special rectangle. So I would make the inheritance like this. Yeah? Sounds logic to us, right? No? This is the upside. The downside is that in the rectangle I may I maybe have a method called set width huh? and I have another method called set height. Huh? This does not make sense in a square because width and height are the same by definition. Huh? So I inherit some methods which do the same. Huh? Maybe I can overload them uh, by doing just setting also the other thing yeah, to the same value. Uh, but you know, then I have a little bit, where's the difference? Why I'm setting the height and why I'm setting the width? It's a square, I set just the side length. So this is not 100% nice. Huh? Of course I could do graphic object, graphic object is square, huh? and then rectangle is inheriting from square. Then I can avoid this. However, then I have a little bit unlogic uh, object model because I have a common object, then I have a very special object, and then I have a slightly common object. Huh? Hmm. Of course, third position, a third possibility, both puck, close to each other, both inherit from graphic object. Huh? Then I might, because they are very similar, then I will end up in the situation where I have to code things twice. Yeah? So 
to calculate the area, for instance, in rectangle and square, exactly the same formula. Huh? A mal B, A multiplied by B. In square, it's A and B the same value. But, huh? Why should I code this twice? Why? One very famous example of, of you just cannot make it right. When we have seen that when we run our program, yeah, we call a method. This method is defined somewhere else, so we will go to there. Then this method maybe is calling a callback function, going to a third position and so on. So this program flow through our source code is much more complex than in a procedural approach. Procedural approach, pack, 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 call procedure, go there, pack, 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 line after line. Yeah? This is not that hard to follow. An object-oriented code might be hard to follow what happens next. Yeah? This is not that easy for us then to understand. One thing is also rational databases. Yeah? You might think, hey, rational databases, there are, I mean, there are tables inside and there are there are entries inside and each entry, I mean, if I interpret the definition of the table as an as, as, uh, object class, yeah, then and the attributes are attributes and so on, hey, this is very similar. Yeah? Yeah, it's similar, but not, not the same. Yeah? Because in a rational database, there are not two times the same entry. The data in the database is defining the entry. It's unique. Yeah? There is no second line in the table which has the same data inside. No problem on the object-oriented side. Two objects, same data. Hello, why not? Yeah? So they are not 100% compatible. This makes it sometimes hard that we let those things interact with each other. Yeah? There is a little bit friction. This is why there are also object-oriented databases, however, they, their, their meaning in the real world is not that high. Yeah? The big elephant is rational database. Yeah? And there is a little bit king, 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 king. Not 100% compatible. And also, uh, I think it was in Romanian Bucharest, or uh, I don't remember, it was some um, Alexander Shatsiriu. I also don't know how to pronounce this name, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, however, I will make an insert that you know. There was a uh, test done. Huh? Procedural approach, coded some, some typical algorithms which are used. Object-oriented approach, or same algorithms are coded. Huh? It was not just to prove a point. Huh? It was good code, okay? And then we do have, did they, they realize, hey, did they let those two things run? Yeah? And they realized the procedural approach was much more efficient, yeah? almost half more efficient. Yeah? And also the power consumption, the power consumption of the object-oriented approach was 95% higher than from the procedural approach. These were findings simply. Yeah? This might have uh, might have some influence on handheld devices. Yeah? So here is battery power is an issue. Yeah? Now you could say, hey, I mean, so many downsides, object-oriented programming. Why are we dealing with this? Just because a lot of people are? Yeah. Then I say, hey, hold your horses. Yeah. Because. Object-oriented programming is not just used because it's there, yeah? because it has some major benefits. And I hope you experienced also this object-oriented approach on our... The Blink sketch, it was more complex, yeah? but then we added new functionality like this trigger event of the input. Yeah? That, and we added it exactly at the position where it belongs, where it logically belongs. Yeah? And this gives us that much overview and is helping us that much that we do 
make less mistakes. Yeah? Object-oriented code is much more compatible with our world. Yeah? It's not that abstract. And this is the really big benefit of object-oriented code, object-oriented approach, that we can handle it easy and extend it easy, yeah? that we can add new functionality at exactly the position where it logically belongs and not just somewhere to have and then we end up in a patchwork of something. No. Yeah? It's, from the maintenance point of view, much better. Yeah? And this is actually what do we want to have? We want to have programs which work and have less mistakes. Yeah? That's it. Yeah? This is why object-oriented approaches is that much used. It's the big benefit. Also this capsuling of things which belong together. This is so this is so much power and definition. Yeah? Very disadvantage up to now. Yeah? If it really comes to the point where it where we're counting clock cycles to get things done, yeah, then it might be different. Yeah? But if it's a program, yeah? and this thing with the power consumption, yeah? keep in mind that in the program those algorithms are used, yeah? but only, only a part of the program is executing this these algorithms. The yeah? main part is hand data handling, input and output handling, user interaction, so on, which is much bigger part than this, this algorithms actually. Yeah? I'm not talking about scientific simulations and so on, where uh, big mainframe computers calculate two days and then the result is four. <laughs> yeah? No, no, I'm not talking about those simulation things. I'm talking about programs. Yeah? Usable user programs and so on, stuff like this. Their object oriented oriented programming is the element of choice. Okay? The technique of choice. Yeah. That's it. That's it what you're going to hear from me in this course about computers, how they are working, hardware and object oriented programming. Yeah? Maybe I will do some videos that I Build up a computer here that you see those stuff. How this is, how this looks like. Yeah, I've done not done this in in in, in decades. Yeah, former former times I built every computer on my own and this mainboard and this processor and then just to be able to game somehow and somewhere. Yeah, and then it was fun. Yeah, maybe I have a little bit of flashback. I will put it online, but I don't promise. Yeah, uh, yeah, for this. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.